Welcome, welcome. We are playing War for Throne 1, the original. Um, in this variant, you have 20 pawns, not 21. The king is more centralized than it is with War for, War for Throne 2. And of course, the center, the space in the center is more limited. It's four squares as opposed to 16. Um, so the strategy or the typical strategy that we see in the War for Throne 2 variant mostly still applies. There are a few other things. Um, in general, I find that getting to the center first uh, or maintaining a defense of the center is um, is advantageous here because it's easier to defend the center. One king in the center defends versus having 16 squares where you need uh, two kings to adequately defend the center. So, uh, race to the center, I won that, which is good. My next step is going to be to provide support to that king. Uh, there will be ideas possibly later on of red, yellow, or even blue. Um, dual attacking this center position. So having support here is a good thing. Of course, this is intimidating to red, as we see a reaction there. Um, I'll capture. Yeah, so right away, um, these tactics coming into the game. Of course, if I recapture, yellow just steps up. Red can keep, keep attacking, so I'm going to do this. If red captures, he's defending my king, which is interesting. Now, if yellow captures, red gets the center. So that's an odd move. I'm going to cut my losses here. Yellow's dominant in the center. I'm OK with that. Um, it is important to gain control of the center early on. But as we've noticed, um, it also makes you the, the top dog, so to speak. So. Um, you get attacked. If you're the one holding holding the, the hill, um, you're the one who has to defend the hill. And uh, you're getting attacked from all sides. Okay, um, now might be a good opportunity for me to start attacking red jointly with blue, but there's a bigger thing that I'm concerned about here. This yellow king is get, getting very active. Blue needs to pay attention to yellow instead of messing around with red. And he needs to do that right now. Capture here, stop the engagement with red, block the center. That's what blue needs to do. OK, good. So we see that happening. Um, I'm going to step up over here, uh, provide some additional support to my front against yellow. That's an odd capture, odd time for a capture, especially since it's losing points or not. It's giving up three points for one. We've talked before about how this trade, uh, two for one, is a loss. OK, I'm going to capture here first. Um, ordinarily, I'd say, oh, I'm winning a piece. But I'm not, because yellow is assisting. Now, will yellow go all out here? I don't think so, because then he gets checked. I think yellow steps back. That works, too. Blue steps up. I step over. Um, so do I go here or here? I think this is better. Now this king is defended twice, should it come under attack. Blue is scaring yellow towards me, that's good. I'm going to continue developing this side and um, let yellow feel comfortable here. Okay, getting ready for this promotion next. Let's step up, step up. Uh, I think one step here is good. Promote. OK, not promoting. Now I get to promote. I promote again. All right. This bullet time control is, is strenuous when you have good opposition here. Yellow, not the smartest play, but blue's done well so far. Red's doing well defensively. So I'm going to do this just to kind of um, 
work with blue a little bit to whittle down red's uh, red supply of pieces. I've also noticed that this game moves, um, like Throne War Mini, this game moves really fast. Uh, and I'm not just saying that because it's a bullet time control, but um, it seems a lot easier to get rid of material on this version of War for Throne than on War for Throne 2. War for Throne 2, it's easier to be conservative with your pieces, maintain material, um, but Throne War Mini and the original War for Throne are, uh, are variants where um, getting rid of pieces is almost a, a consequence of, of play. All right, so check, takes, second check, takes. Um, that would almost certainly be winning for me. I'd be able to get my two other checks in somewhere. But with red attacking and blue also right here, uh, I'd be chancing um, giving blue the checkmate. So I'm not going to go for that right now. I'm going to step back. I think at this stage in the game, it's better be, to be conservative, especially since it's four, four versus four. I want to maintain at least balanced material. Step over here. I can promote. Red is, red is being active here. Um, is this checkmate? No, it's not. Blue has, or green, yellow has that. Let's promote. Captures, captures. Uh, this would be checkmate. So, let's see if I can get a checkmate instead. This is still not checkmate. If I pull back, now a move here from blue would not be checkmate. Okay, so in order to prevent checkmate, I need to go back. Now yellow has that square available, and I get the checkmate, is that correct? Um, no, I don't get the checkmate, because there, there, and there are available. Uh, let's do this. Blue can stalemate. A good strategy there for blue would be to give stalemate. Uh, not stalemate yet. This is good for me. Red goes here. Well, red takes the center. Um, now here, blue can't give checkmate. I get checkmate instead. Um, blue and I are going to work together to stop red, so I'm not worried about this. Here is what I do next. Now red here, blue here, I'm going here. Come on, blue! Can't expect me to do all the heavy lifting. Uh, there's nothing that blue can do now. Okay, so it's second place for us. Well played by red. I'm glad I got that checkmate. Uh, blue played well there, but uh, yeah, it looks like it was a mostly lower rated game. So let's throw a GG in the chat. Um, we've got three players rejoining. Are we going to get another quick game? I'll wait. Uh, let's resume when we have our... Oh, there we go. So we're doing the same thing. I wouldn't be surprised if it's the same three opponents. At least now we know what the rating pool stands at. Uh, same theory as War for Throne 2. If you're not attacking in the opening, you're losing material. So green best would be to capture here. Yep, so we have the Greedy Grable opening. My preferred choice. Um, actually, I think I messed it up. I was supposed to capture there because uh, yellow could promote with a, with a capture. I messed up my namesake opening. How does that happen? All right, we're going for the center. Again, it's a double-edged sword. Going for the center means that you have target on your back. I think here, so we can stop red from taking the center. Promote, maybe we get center after all. Or yellow's gonna get the center, I guess. 
Okay? Yellow is still getting the center. Here. Anything wrong with that? Disconnect. Good old Comcast Gambit from Red. Not great in a bullet game. 20 seconds now gone. All right, let's use this time to strategize. Of course, I want these promotions soon. Here is good. If red doesn't reconnect, here is good. Okay, so here is good. I don't know why I didn't see that earlier. I like this. We're in the center. We've got to defend it. I think here, here, same thing that we talked about last game. It's good to defend that center, uh, center holder. Didn't necessarily work perfectly for us last time, but uh, um, we were able to, to deal with the, the threats. All right, let's do that. Red will now have an undefended king. Um, if I take, is red going to support this king? Yes, he will. Let's do this. Always a good move. Uh, to get these back ranked pawns rolling, even if you can't promote them just yet. I like that. Gives an attack avenue for red. Yellow could capture here or here. All right, let's see if green captures. Then I'll capture. Yes. Okay, red resigns. That's good for us. This game is looking a lot better than the last one. Um, what to do? So at this stage in the game, I have made the mistake many times. I actually uh, recorded this week's video. Uh, this is my second go at recording this week's video because in an earlier video, I was playing the original War for Throne and I had a position that looked very solid. The player to my right resigned or timed out. And um, I thought, okay, this is gonna be a cakewalk, but I ended up in second place. Why? Because I got too confident. It was at this stage in the game and I said, okay, let me just make way for the center um, and uh, I'll have an easy time of it. Turned out as soon as I stepped out with my king, the other two players decided, okay, let's work together to stop blue. Um, capture here, good, bad, I think good. Throw yellow off. Yellow can capture here. I'll capture again, recapture, and then I get um, an extra king if, I if I've calculated that correctly. No, you know what? That's even. Sorry. But here, and now I'm not engaged with yellow. Of course, we could see that. I'll promote. I'll still promote. Green might be, might be going for a mate on the dead king. Looks like that's the plan. Um, let's continue to weaken yellow. Maybe after the smoke clears, I'll have an easy avenue going this way to the center. Okay, so now we see that move. I'm gonna step up. I don't wanna give yellow the chance to promote with a capture. This is a good move. Um, However, uh, let's capture here first. And now I can capture, no, I can capture here. Yellow has to take here, otherwise I get a free pawn. Okay, green gets the mate that we were looking at. Let's step back. This move could be scary from yellow. Um, let's fortify the center or take yellow. Let's fortify the center. Now step up. Green looks like he's getting interested in attacking me, especially since I have these two. I'm the top dog. I need to be taken down. We'll get some promotions going over here. Step back maybe and then promote. Continue to promote. This dead king is annoying. 
All right, these moves are basically on autopilot. I want to promote, I want to have resources to defend against green. I want to complete development. Yellow, losing time. Maybe that's our winning idea. Drain the clock from yellow. Let's step back. I don't necessarily want to trade with green because then I'll be weak against yellow. Oh, I should take advantage of this trading going on. Let's step over here. Okay, yellow's down on time. That's what we wanted. Of course, green could go for mate on yellow, which would put me in second place after a claimed win. I'll take here. Um, I'll step back. Okay, good. Yellow had different ways he could go. I'm glad that it turned out that way. I don't necessarily need to give checkmate to yellow right now, but I want to make sure that yellow is not going anywhere where green can get the checkmate. Let's step back. Let's have defenses. Let's step over. Let's give a check. Let's step back up. Take here, give a check, and give another check, take, and step over, here, here, we're doing all right, sound effect is getting mildly annoying, but that's the way it is, all right, so now how do we convert this is the question, I think, uh, we pull our resources over this way. Let's trade some with green on the queen side. I'll recapture here. I don't need two kings in the center. Now stepping up here doesn't allow green any further movement that way. Let's go here. Let's step up here. Oh, 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 what a blunder. What a blunder. Time pressure got the better of me. Oh, man. And now we're losing. That's just the way it is sometimes, I guess. Oh, you hate to see that. You hate to see that. Yeah, this is over. Oh, no. Well, second place. Another GG. Second place. It is what it is. Um, I think we're going to wrap up there. I'm glad I got that checkmate on yellow. Oh, man. I can't believe I did that. Whew. Yellow says he blew second place by flagging. I'm not sure. Um, let's take a look. Stay ahead of blue and let green win. Let's take a look at yellow. So, was yellow ever in a position where he was in contention for second place? Maybe. Maybe. I will concede that uh, had yellow let green win and focused his resources on me, that uh, I would have been in third place. So I will accept that, um, but the the way that I think about it is, you know, you always say, "Oh, if I hadn't lost on time, then this." But here's the argument. If you had all the time in the world, you'd play a lot better. You know, you're, you're playing a bullet game. The level of play has to be at a level, at a, at a bullet level. So um, losing on time does, is not, you know, a get out of jail free card. It just means that uh, you were playing better moves, but also spending more time thinking about it. So you can look at it the same way. You can say, oh, I lost some time. 
But you also need to realize that if you had more time, you would have played better moves. Anyway, that's always my, my go-to argument. That's the video for this week. Uh, War for Throne original will also be in the War for Throne mega match. So we've got uh, about a month before those qualifiers start, a little bit less. So uh, I would encourage you all, if you're planning on playing in the War for Throne mega match, to study these games as well. Play these games. Um, War for Throne original and Throne War mini uh, play important roles in that mega match as well. Um, if you're only good in, in War for Throne 2, uh, you'll do well, but uh, you're not going to win it. Anyway, uh, that's the video. Like I said, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, we see you all.